Hey guys, welcome to Quinn's Tree Farm, coming to you straight through the power of YouTube right from China, Maine today at Ben and Molly's Choose and Cut Christmas Tree Farm. We are here at the 2021 MCTA, that's the Maine Christmas Tree Association Fall Meeting. Now, we have done all kinds of fun things. <laughs> Yesterday we were inside all day doing some lectures and today is a sun, sunny Sunday afternoon and we're learning about all things Christmas trees. Uh, sorry for not being able to get videos out to you. I know uh, all of you are excited to see things but boy it's been busy up to the tree farming cornfield but I knew it was important to get one out. I know there's a lot of important information to share uh, here today so Maybe we'll learn a few things, so stick around and uh, let's learn about Christmas trees. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's the whole idea here is we're, we're, we're talking about a lot of different um, uh, subjects. This is all new territory, a marketing order for Christmas trees uh, uh, sponsored by or, or, or uh, regulated by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. That's, you know, that's never been done before. So I'm a Christmas tree grower just like you. Uh, my wife and I have two farms, um, uh, totaling 300 acres, uh, all in Christmas trees, or soon to, soon to be all in Christmas trees. Um, we're in southeastern Pennsylvania. If anybody knows uh, a couple of landmarks, uh, Valley Forge and Lancaster, Pennsylvania, we're dead center between the two of those. Um, what I wanted to uh, talk about today, and, and, and like Ryan said, um, the, the promotion board um, got their wings clipped last year, just like everybody else, thanks to COVID. So we weren't able to get out to uh, all the grower meetings uh, all, all during 2020. And so we've really ratcheted up this year uh, during 2021. And uh, between uh, members of the uh, board members who have, like myself, who have go out, as well as um, Marcia, our executive director, Marcia Gray, our research director, Cindy Knudsen. Um, we're, we're blanketing the, the, the whole U.S. Um, in, in an attempt to uh, get the message out and talk about what happened last year uh, and, and where we're going uh, in, the, in the future. So <clears throat> at, after 2019, uh, in the uh, early parts of 2020, our uh, public, re public relations firm, Fleshman Hiller, um, came to us and said, you know, um, and, and this is, you know, right around March, uh, April of, of 2020, uh, you know, this, this whole COVID-19 thing, that, that, that might impact you guys in a big way. It's impacting everybody else. Um, and... And they said, you should, we should probably do some research, some, some, uh, uh, some consumer research to see what the trends are going to be in 2020. Because, you know, we're really nervous that you guys aren't going to sell many trees. And um, so they did the research. Uh, the promotion board paid for this consumer research, um, which was, which was uh, I think it was 2,000 uh, bona fide Christmas tree users between the ages of 21 and 49. And um, what they found, the long and the short of the research was, they came back to us and said, holy crap, you guys better get ready. People are going to buy Christmas trees no matter what. And sure enough, um, that played out. Um, and I'm sure you, you all felt it here. Uh, we felt it in the Mid-Atlantic and they felt it all the way across the country. Um, one of the best years ever. And everybody wants to, um, all the... Uh, the uh, big thinkers, so to speak, uh, want to say, well, it was because of COVID and everybody was bobbled up inside of their homes all year long and they just wanted to put a, a capstone on the crappiest year ever and blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, we, we kind of took a little reservation with that because for the last five and a half years, five or six years, rather, um, the Christmas Tree Promotion Board has been spending consistently one million dollars on the the promotion of real Christmas trees in the real Christmas tree industry. Consistently, not just like a flash in the pan, one thing here and, a, and something here. And so that the two together, the the 
the COVID-19 plus five or six years of consistent messaging um, to the industry or to the consumers um, has, has blossomed into the perfect storm last year. And it was just fabulous uh, uh, opportunity for um, people to come out, um, get a Christmas tree, and, and also um, enjoy what everybody, uh, the opportunities that Christmas tree farmers provide uh, people on their farms. What's the def what is a weed? What's the definition of a weed? Something you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> Something that grows very well. Yeah, right. And typically they do, yeah. So something growing in a place you don't want it to grow, right? And I'm assuming that everybody here has weeds. Alright, so we've cleared the board with that. You can tell their farmers out here. Cool. Yeah? I've got them all. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, and and some of these you really want to manage. Some of these are kind of benign. They're not all that detrimental to tree growing. Um, but there's different ways to manage, I would say, probably every one of these. And the first one, how many people know what bed straw is? And Cleavers is another name for it. It looks like just a couple. Okay, we won't spend much time in this then. Old hay fields, typical problem, old hay fields. How do you manage it? Mow it. Mow it early. It's an annual. So it's making seeds that are going to germinate probably next year. Some probably persist. That's the way seeds are. But don't wait until August to mow it. Mow in May, mow in July, mow in the fall. Mow it, mow it. You're going to see a huge difference. There is an herbicide you can spray that will stop that germination, won't kill the grass. It's not all that expensive. I know Cooperative Extension uh, recommends it. I know farmers who have used it clean up hay fields if they want to rejuvenate for haying, but mowing is the best approach for bed straw, initially. So I'd like to present this fine sign to you, fine boat. Thank you very much. Look this way, guys. Look this way, guys.
tilt it one more time, and then we put in our first And this is where, you guys, I'll take you out and I'll show you, I think, where's Matt? Is Matt still around? Is he gone? Uh, you call it, uh, I think he called it shoestring rot or something like that. I can show you some. Yeah, what happens is I tried to get all the, going, all the organics out of the fields the best we could, hand picking, whatever it took. But knowing it was still going to be some that got bottom plowed under, I was afraid of that shoestring. You guys are thinking about starting off and you're going to go clean a bunch of hardwood, uh, really talk to a forester because that shoestring, what I was told, lives in the hardwood roots but doesn't kill a hardwood. But once you take the stump off and if the roots are still in the soil, then that's, that uh, fungus is still living in those roots. So after you plant your tree, it usually doesn't attack them in their four, five, six, six, six. And, uh, you won't know it. And they talk about one guy who planted 60,000. All right, so uh, about to wrap for the uh, 2021 Maine Christmas Tree Association. Uh, hope you enjoyed it a little bit. I have a little bit of news, so a uh, couple of things. Apparently, uh, I do work in this. They, they like the work that I've done for the association, so they said, well, we're going to make you a board of directors, so I graciously accepted that. So I'll be a director of the MCTA starting in January of 2021. And uh, I also nominated a Quinn's Tree Farm for the fall meeting in 2021 as well. So we're going to have the meeting at uh, my farm next year. So that'll be a lot of fun. So feeling pretty happy. And as you know, I'd really rather feel bad in Maine than feel good anywhere else. So there we go, my friends. I'll see you soon.